If there was ever any doubt, these images offer concrete evidence. The soldier firing directly at protesters who are running away. This is what the Egyptian government calls restraint. Sheer force and fire. And all of it just minutes after the prime minister promised no violence will be used. Protesters didn't expect much from a man whose very choice as head of the cabinet was one of the main reasons behind their sit-in. Still, what he had to say disappointed many. What we're having today is not a revolution. It's an attack against the revolution. I told the U.S. that I have met more than 350 of you on 11 days, and uh, 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 they are youth from this country. Uh, I've met them and I've told them this is a government to rescue the revolution of the uh, 25 of then January. But there was no rescue for these protesters who continued battling the military for a second day in a row. The violence spread from the cabinet and parliament buildings into Tahrir Square, where the revolution began. Security forces stepped up their campaign after government buildings, including a historic research center, was set on fire in the Mili. State television broadcast live footage of the violence. It gave the same line as military officials, that the protesters were simply carrying out acts of vandalism. No reference was made to security forces attacking other media. But whatever Egyptians were being told on state television, with those on the ground, the ugliness they've witnessed firsthand is indisputable. Indisputable, too, is the fact that the military council is gradually losing political ground. Already a new civilian advisory council it had appointed to hear relations between the army and the protest movement has suspended its work. The question now is whether the men in uniform will change their ways and if there's even will to do so. Al Jazeera, Cairo.